Um, so Andrea, my wife, and her, her mother, who is in the room, she's the one who's in the room today, and then Lacey, who's helping with the kids, uh, the three of them were having a Facebook conversation about Norwex products. And if you don't know what those are, they're just household products. They make mops and cleaning supplies, stuff like that, right? So uh, so they were talking about Norwex, and they, Andrea was upstairs on her phone, and I was downstairs watching a football game, and all of a sudden I just start hearing this ding, ding, like every five seconds, ding. I'm like, where is that ding? What is that dinging happening? And so I finally track it down. It's Andrea's tablet that she's left. She signed into Facebook, and every time someone had a new message, it was dinging, right? So I'm like, aha, I found it. So I start reading the conversation, seeing they're talking about Norwex, and I decided to have a little fun. <laughs> so I was playing, I was playing, the, <laughs> I was playing the part of Andrea, and I was like, hey Lacey, because she's the one who, who does Norwex. I said, hey Lacey, uh, do, does Norwex have any wigs? I'm starting to get a little thin on the up top. Um, well. <laughs> and her mom makes a laughing face emoji, right? And, and Lacey goes, well, you could try our chenille mop. Green might look good on you. <laughs> it's a green mop. <laughs> uh, so then I put, hey, I really need a wig. Uh, does Norwex sell wigs? And, and, and uh, you know, they're both laughing. And then finally, Andrea starts typing in there. I don't know how I'm saying this. I'm not the one typing this. How is this happening? And I'm just laughing. I'm like, do you do Finally, she comes downstairs and sees me, and I just burst out laughing. I'm like, gotcha. It was great. It was, it was awesome. That was a classic moment. It's fun being part of a family sometimes, isn't it? So no matter what kind of relationship that we're talking about, a friendship, family, significant other, uh, we, we all have, in those relationships, we have great moments where we have a lot of fun together, uh, and then sometimes we have bumps in the road where we have friction in all relationships, right? We have those bumps in the road, those frustrating times. So how do you hold it together during the tough times? That's the question we're talking about today. How do you hold it together? Well, there's this concept in the Bible called unity. Unity. And man, I don't know about you, but in a, in a world of fighting and chaos, the world could use some principles and teaching on unity right now. Amen? That's right. You know, God knows how to have unity amongst us humans. He made us. He, he knows uh, how, how to teach us how to have unity. And by the way, these principles for church family would work for any relationship. You could take these same principles I'm going to teach today and next week because this is a part one. And then next week will be uh, Christians as family part two. You could take these principles and apply them to any relationship, really. But we are going to zero in on the church family. How to uh, act as family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, so uh, the Apostle Paul always had the same pattern, the same pattern in all his letters. He basically uses the first half of his letter to lay down theological teachings about things about God, and here's a truth about God, and here's a truth about people, and you know, the first half is this foundation he lays. Then the second half is all practical. He goes into, okay, here's what you do with that that I just told, taught you, right? Um, so he starts off, Christians are family, chapter 2, 19, chapter 3, 14. And then part 2 is how you should act as family, starting in chapter 4, verse 1. So I just want to talk a little bit about this theological foundation. Gentiles used to be excluded from citizenship in God's family. Gentiles used to be excluded, but now through Jesus, they have access to the Father also. How many of you, uh, just by a show of hands, grew up in a Jewish family growing up? Anybody? How many Gentile, which means non-Jewish? Yeah, so basically all of us in this room, we wouldn't have had access, but now we do through Amen. Jesus. Is anyone Thank thankful God. for that Amen. this morning? Thank Jesus you. broke down the barrier, the dividing wall uh, that Paul called the dividing wall of hostility. There used to be hostility between Jews and Gentiles, but now Jesus has broke down that wall and we can be together. We can be one in Christ Jesus. That's right. Um, how many of you are old enough to remember the Berlin Wall coming down? Remember Berlin Wall? Yeah, that was a big deal, wasn't it? Like we were watching that on TV and it was like, finally the wall is coming down. Uh, wasn't it? Wasn't it Reagan who said, "Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall"? Right, and, and that was a 
big deal in our history, wasn't it? And we remember that. It was a moment. But I'm going to submit to you that the moment Jesus was able to tear down the walls between Jew and Gentile was an even bigger moment. That's right. And in fact, I say tons bigger. Thank world God. bigger. Um, so let's read about this. Like you are family, Paul would say. Now act as family. How do we act as family? Chapter 4, uh, which is page 1007. Uh, 1007 in these the church Bibles. You can use your the church Bibles. We have some scattered uh, underneath the chairs there, or you can use your Bible app. Whatever you prefer, doesn't matter to us. Whatever works the best. So he's writing from prison. He was locked up just for doing God's work. That's it. He didn't do anything wrong, Paul did. Uh, so he writes, as a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you, bottom, of, bottom right page of 1007, as a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. So now watch how we can live a life worthy of the calling. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We are one. So how can we live to please God? Well, first point is family love is patient, bearing with one another. And remember, he's writing to the Christians. He's writing to, hey, as brothers and sisters in Christ, here's how I want you to behave with one another, right? In the context of the church, he says, if you love as family like you're supposed to, you're going to be patient and you're going to bear with one another. New Living Translation says, making allowances for each other's faults. I like that. Um, NAS says, showing tolerance. New Century Version says, accepting each other. So it says, bear with each other because, here's the secret, I'm going to tell you something. He says, bear with each other because... We can all be unbearable sometimes. That's right. In fact, I want you to just turn to your neighbor and say, you can be unbearable at times. <laughs> now, now I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I can be unbearable at times. I can be unbearable. Wow. I'm actually amazed that you admitted that. That's, I'm proud of you. Good job. Good job. <laughs> So, I don't know if you know this, but Ephesians and Colossians are very similar. Um, one written to the, the people who lived in Ephesus, one to Colossae. They're called sister letters because they're very, very similar. And in Colossians, Paul wrote basically the same thing to the Colossians. He said, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and there's patience again. Bear with each other, there's that again, and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. We talked about that earlier during communion time. That's right. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect what? Unity. Unity. Hey, that's what we've been talking about. <coughs> Unity. Bear with one another. Um, when I was younger, I didn't know it at the time, but I was being unbearable to my brother. My brother's three and a half years older than me. And me and my best friend Andy did everything together. My parents would pick up Andy and his brother and his sister, the three of them, every Wednesday and every Sunday and take them to youth group and take them to church. And me and my friend Andy had invented this kind of made-up language based on Inspector Gadget. And Inspector Gadget's <laughs> word was wowzers. Yeah? And so we would put errs on the end of every word. Wowzers, doozers, and and one day we're riding down the road, and my brother couldn't take it anymore. And he said, Would you please just shut up and stop saying those stupid words? <laughs> he had had it. And I didn't get it at the time, because I was a junior higher. I didn't get it at the time that I was being annoying. But now that I have kids that are those age, I get it now. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, but uh, junior high kids can make some weird noises. I'm like, What is that noise? Who is making that? What is that noise? What is that? Seven-year-olds can make weird noises, right? Seven-year-olds. Uh, I get it now. Uh, we can all be unbearable at times, 
You know, we like to say things like, people are weird. Oh, those people are weird, right? Those people are weird. And what we mean by they're weird is they don't do things the same way we do them, right? right? That's really all it means. They just don't do things the way we do them, so we say, they're weird. Yeah. But can I tell you a secret? We're all weird in our own ways. That's we right. are. That's we are true. all quirky. We all have personality quirks. And we're all a little weird in our own ways. Have you heard about the three absent-minded sisters, Wanda, Martha, and Wilma, who lived together in the same house? So Wanda decided she wanted to take a bath. So she went upstairs and she starts drawing the bath water, starts undressing, and in the middle of that forgets what she was doing. And she goes, huh, was I getting into the bath or getting out of the bath? So she called down to her sister, Martha, Martha, was I getting into the bath or out of the bath? Martha calls up, you are so silly, you are so absent-minded. Let me come up there, I'll help you. So she goes up the stairs, and about halfway up the stairs, she forgot what she was doing. And she goes, was I going up the stairs, or was I going down the stairs? I can't remember. Wilma, Wilma, was I going up the stairs or down the stairs? Wilma goes, oh, you are so absent-minded, you are so silly. I'm so glad I'm not that absent-minded, knock on wood. And she goes, was somebody knocking at the front door or the back door? Yeah. <laughs> Do I have personality quirks that get on my brother's nerves? Do I have personality quirks that get on my biological sister's nerves? Yes. Do they do things that get on my nerves? Yes. yes. Does my dad do things that get on my nerves? Yes. Do I do things that get on his nerves? Yes. My mom, she's a saint. I can't think of anything. Okay. <laughs> 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 but we do, we do these things that get on each other's nerves, but guess what? We yeah. still talk as family. We still get together, even though we do things that get on each other's nerves, right? We still are loving, we're still a family. And so take that and apply that to Christians, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to do things that get on each other's nerves. It's going to happen, That's right? The longer we spend and the more time we spend together, something's going to happen. We start to get on each other's nerves, but... Can we love each other? Can we bear with each other and carry on as family? That's right. And so I have, the the next step is remind yourself, I have personality quirks too. Yeah. (laughs) We need all personality types. How many of you know that's true? That's true. We need all the different personalities. All right. Uh, Let's go on. Verse 2, we read, family love strives to keep the peace, not stir up trouble. So we read verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep the peace. We should be keepers of peace, not stirring up trouble. Uh, Colossians, the sister letter, in Colossians 3.15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. There it is again, right? In Colossians. God wants us to be a people of peace. Um, William Hartley, who wrote the book His Needs, Her Needs, kind of a famous book, the top, in the top five needs of men, one of them is they want peace in their house. They want peace at home. And, and I can relate to that. I'm like, that's me. Like, I don't like there to be uh, fighting or friction or, or noises, or and, and it gets on my nerves. So as you can imagine, with three kids in the house, I'm frustrated every day. Because there's noise and fighting and blah, blah, blah every day, right? Um, you ever have family members that stir up trouble? Don't point at them. That's not nice. Don't you point at them. Family members who stir up trouble. Some of you dread the holidays, don't you? Because you just know there's going to be that person that stirs up the pot and holidays. And I don't even know if I want to go, right? And, and that's like human nature. Every diabolical plan involves trying to split people up. You think about it. Satan was in heaven with God. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be in charge. And when that didn't happen, what did he do? He got kicked out and he took a third of the angels with him. First church split was in heaven. Yeah. Took a third of the angels. Like, all right, if I have to go, I'm taking people with me, right? Taking these angels with me. Um, Star Wars, right? And uh, Darth Sidious turns the most powerful Jedi, Anakin, against his own people, against the Jedi. Uh, Batman, the, I love the Batman series with, with Christian Bale and Heath Ledger. Um, but whoever wrote that, whoever did the writing, 
Like they must have had kind of an evil mind because the stuff they wrote for the Joker to do was like evil. And he was a master at pitting people against each other. And, and you see that through the whole series. He's like pitting people against each other, trying to divide people up, right? But our mentality needs to be keepers of the peace, be guardians of the peace. Okay. Keep the peace within the body of Christ. The Greek word for diligent, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. And Greek experts say that the word for where it says make every effort or be diligent to keep the peace is the word spudazo, and it means take great pains, make every effort, spare no effort Amen. to keep unity and peace in the church. Did you catch that? Spare no effort. You do as much as you possibly can to maintain peace and unity. The opposite, of course, is stirring up trouble. Stirring up trouble. And when I was a kid, we used to play a game called Slug Bug. Remember Slug Bug? You saw a Volkswagen bug and you got to punch your brother as hard as you could in the arm, right? Slug Bug! Some people come to church looking for something to hit. Yeah. You know? It's just like they're just looking for something to get upset about, to, to complain about. Um, but we shouldn't be that way. When my parents one, at one point went to a church in Michigan and they said that this person got upset one day at, at the church and so they wrote these anonymous letters and gave them out to everybody um, I don't know if they mailed them or whatever but the message was the preachers are terrible, the elders are terrible, in fact that's why they're, they're all sick, the elders are sick because they're terrible, tell our terrible elders right? What, that is a horrible thing to do that is not the biblical way that we're supposed to deal with things in the church. You know, writing anonymous letters and stirring up trouble. And whenever somebody stirs up trouble, it's never like right out in the open. It's almost never right out in the open, right? It's always behind the scenes. It's always people complaining to the wrong person, you know, stirring up false rumors, stirring up gossip. Um, God wants unity. Unity. And, th and there's a strong part in this passage where it talks about all these ones you know, there is one this, one that. We have all these things in common. We need to have unity because of our commonalities. The reason we strive for unity, the reason we bear with each other, the reason we try to keep the peace and make every effort to keep the peace is because we belong to the same family. That's right. We, have, we are part of the same body. We have the same spirit, the same heavenly father, the same Lord Jesus Christ. And since we have the same spirit, we are to be one in the spirit. Since we have the same spirit among us, we need to be one in the spirit. Some of you have probably heard the teaching about how we, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You ever heard that? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? 1 Corinthians 6, we, if you're a believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. He actually comes to live inside of you. And your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So in 1 Corinthians 6, it says, because that's true, do this, behave this way, don't do this, right? But did you know that in 1 Corinthians 3, there's a concept that's slightly different, which is together, collectively, we make up the temple of the Holy Spirit. All of us together make up the temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, don't you know that you yourselves, notice it's a plural, you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is what? Sacred. Sacred. And you together are that temple. Did you notice that? You all together make up God's temple. So yes, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit individually, but also corporately we make up the temple and God doesn't like, he said, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. In other words, God takes this unity seriously and look out if you're, if you're stirring up trouble, right? And so some of you may want to ask, do the second next step, which is ask someone to hold you accountable. Just go to someone and say, hey, will you, if you see me do something that's stirring up trouble, will you call me out on that? Will you let me know? Because I don't want to do that. I don't want to cause trouble. Um, here's, here's one you could do. Make it a point to say good things about others this week. I'm going to really strive to say only good things about my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right? Build them up. 
Uh, I'll, before we leave this section, uh, I want to point out the word patience. Patience. Did you notice that word? We, we've come across it a couple, three times, right? Patience. So in the New Testament, in Greek, there's two words that actually in Greek they get translated patience in our English. One of them is the word long-suffering. And it means just what it sounds like. It means to suffer long for a long time. It means to put up with someone for a long time. Right? That's, that's what patience in this context means. It means you don't give up on them. You keep hanging with them. Even though you feel like giving up with them, on them I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up with them for a long time. And that takes us up into uh, the, the last point, which is love always perseveres. Love always perseveres. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 through 7. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love always perseveres. Do people in a family always get along? Yeah. No. Right? We have disagreements, we have fights, mean things are said or done, but family comes back together. My brother and I have had fights. My sister, my biological sister and I have had fights where we were had it out with each other, right? But we still talk to each other. We didn't give up on each other. We're still family. We persevered. I've done some pretty mean things to my sister when we were younger. Lord forgive me, he already has. Um, I've done some mean things, right? So one time I was gonna act like, and I promised I was only gonna act and pretend like I was gonna hit her on the head with a baseball bat, and I was gonna jerk it back before I actually did, and I went too far, and I hit her on the head with a metal baseball bat. That's pretty bad, right? Guess what? She still talks to me to this day, okay? She didn't hold a grudge and forever turn her back on me. Uh, another time I thought it would be funny is me and my friend Andy, we got in a lot of trouble together, me and Andy, we thought it would be funny to take my sister's baby doll and stuff it upside inside a leg warmer, remember leg warmers from the 80s, put it inside a leg warmer and then hung it by a nail in the sun porch. We thought it was hilarious. My sister did not think it was funny at all. And when she went and told my dad, he did not think it was funny at all either. He was mad that we had messed with his daughter. And he came out and he gave Andy, my friend, a look and said, it's time for you to go home. And he ran. <laughs> he saw my dad was serious. Like, okay, okay, Mr. Harper, bye. See you later. And I don't remember exactly what happened to me, but it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> Whatever was done to me. After all the cruel things I've done to my sister, she still talks to me, we're still family, we still love each other, right? Now, she is not innocent in this, okay? She has done some things to me. I still have scars in my arm where she literally grew her nails and sharpened them into claws at one point in her life and dug them into my arm. I have scars. I can show you. So she's not innocent, but guess what? I still talk to my sister. I didn't turn it into a grudge and turn my back on it. We still talk. And that's the thing about family is we take a licking and keep on ticking, right? I can't imagine getting so upset with a family member that I never talk to them again. I know that some families do that, family members, but I can't imagine doing that, like just never speaking to a family member again. So in conclusion, Jesus gathered 12 disciples, right? And he called them brothers. He considered them his brothers, his family. And they spent every day for three and a half years together. And you can't tell me that they didn't have moments where they got on each other's nerves. Yeah, they did. I know they did. And, and, and there's this part where Jesus is teaching them the same thing yet again, and they aren't getting it. And he makes the statement. Jesus says, are you still so dull? Yeah. You can't tell me that wasn't out of frustration. <laughs> like, come on, people, you still don't get it. Um, James and John made the other guys mad because they asked for high level positions in Jesus' kingdom, right? They had friction, but they stuck together. They stuck it out. They didn't give up on each other. And it's a good thing they didn't because we probably wouldn't know Jesus today if they had given up on each other and split and went all their separate ways, right? We get to know Jesus because those brothers stuck together. And possibly, just maybe, something great may happen from us sticking together. Let's pray. 
Father God, I thank you for Jesus and making a way for us to be part of the same family. Lord, it's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. Jews and Gentiles can all be under the same family, have you as Father. Uh, we can fellowship together. We have, we have fellowship. We have brothers and sisters all over the world. It's such a cool thing. Um, but God, as we gather together here weekly with brothers and sisters in Christ, um, those that we see week in and week out, and, and hopefully even more than just once a week, maybe during the week, we get coffee, we, we have a meal together, we fellowship, we encourage each other, we have Bible studies together. Um, the more we get together, there's going to be moments of friction. But we have read today that your goal is peace and unity and love. So God, even though our flesh is going to rise up inside us and want to say or do things that we shouldn't do, I pray that you help us. I pray that you help us to uh, speak things that build others up. I pray that we would persevere, that even though our flesh maybe just wants to give up on somebody, that maybe we give them at least one more chance. Um, God, that we would persevere in these relationships. And that, Jesus, you said, um, we read it last week, that you said that as the world looks at us and they see our kind of love that we have for one another, it would cause them to believe in you. That's right. And so that needs to be our ultimate goal, that they see something different in us Christians, that we don't look just like the world, we don't fight like the world, we don't give up on each other like the world, but they see something different about us and they say, man, I want to be part of that because they've got something special. And that has happened. That has happened for a fact. In the history of the world, I pray that that happens with us, with this body of believers right here. So God, teach us to love one another. It's not going to come easily, but I believe by your power, by your spirit, we can learn this. We can do this. So God, help us. Let your Holy Spirit work in our hearts. Um, we love you. Um, bring us closer to you and bring us closer to our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.